All right, everybody. Now we're going to call Mark Hoadley, who's a stuntman, actor, screenwriter, producer. He's also like a martial arts, like big time martial arts, like person, which we never had a martial arts person on before. So it'll be something new. Even though the last guy we just had on is a martial, does martial is, arts is and movies. Is that him live or a picture? No, that's that's not even him yet. That's his picture. Oh, because this is going to be him live. I hope he's got better lighting. Hello. 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 How you doing? Um, Hello. Well, there you guys are. Now I can see you. Look at all the guitars. Nice. Where? Where? What? SG. Oh. <laughs> that, that, that's what I was going to say. You stole my line, you punk. And look at how white his teeth are. I know they're fake. <laughs> oh, they're not fake. Look at this. <laughs> what <is> this? <laughs> so, Mark, how do I pronounce your last name? It's Hoadley. Hoadley. Jimmy. Yeah, I, it's like Hoadley. Hoadley. There right. you go. Okay. You have to enunciate. You have to break it down. See? Oh, I just want to make good. sure, because when I'm doing Didn't the they, announcement... When I went to school with Lincoln back then, <laughs> they used to say to us, <laughs> no, they would say, do the vowels. If a name is like Kapakarasi, you know, you do it. You you word it out. Didn't they teach you that in Florida? Florida's got the worst schools. It is not. I just want to make sure, because, like, you know, we do an intro, and the intro goes up for our television channel and YouTube yeah, and everything, you and, gotta be and an if idiot. I say it wrong... Idiot not to pronounce it that It doesn't make right. any difference. Sometimes people have a name. Is your name mispronounced much? Uh, I was doing a show at the uh, comedy store on Sunset Boulevard recently in the big room, completely packed, and they're introducing me as Welcome Mark Hadley to the stage. So. Well, that was a fucking idiot. <laughs> he was a fucking idiot. <laughs> I mean, you know, norm meanwhile, Jimmy graduated third in his class. Sixth. Sixth in his class. I went to school in New York. All uh, right, you don't graduate sixth in your class in New York unless you're a genius. If I graduated I in Florida, <laughs> I would have probably graduated first in my class. No. Anyway, all right, so we're going to get some get ready to Jimmy rock and I are married, so we're allowed to do this. Yeah, we bicker all the time. You'll get used to it. Yeah. Uh, just... I, I got it. I know how it is. Don't worry, guys. <laughs> just, just fight back and forth. All right, everybody. Want, now we want to welcome to the Jimmy Star Show with Ron Russell, the fabulously talented actor, stuntman, screenwriter, and producer, and martial arts Hall of Fame member, Mark Hoadley. Hello, and welcome to the show. Hello, guys. Thanks for having me. I really appreciate it. How are you today? Fantastic. Let me introduce you to everybody, starting off with our cool, outrageous man about town co-host, Mr. Ron Russell. Hi, Mark Hadley. <laughs> <laughs> Hi, Ron, but I won't say what you call the other guy. <laughs> you can call me Ron Bustle. <laughs> <laughs> We're kidding around, folks, about his last name because Jimmy had difficulty with it. And now that we've straightened that out, we can proceed. There you go. We've and got we also talked about his beautiful teeth. And his guitars. And his guitars that so aren't there. So we've got the man behind the boards, Chad Murphy. Welcome to the show. I do love the Gibsons back there, no doubt. Well, thank you, Chad. I got a 1960 Les Paul hanging, a 1979 Gibson SG Firebrand Deluxe up there. Like that SG. He's a country uh, music yeah, star. Yeah, Chad's a guitar player. I like, player, I like rock and roll, too. And Neil Diamond, so put that all together. Yeah, and say hi to everybody in the chat room, because the chat room, everybody's talking about the guitars. They all love them. And if you're wow. lucky... You're lucky we'll get Chad to play the guitar now, and he could sing his famous hit, Oh, McDonald, how oh, that bomb. Hey, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Thanks, Ron. And, his farm. and then every now and then that. he does this. Drang, <laughs> had some cows. Drang, E-I-E-I-O. <laughs> drang, drang, drang. He does three drangs. So wait a sec. Why do you have, like, are you also a musician? Or do you just like Yes, to I've been a guitarist for 35 years. Okay, so you're. A, have you ever released anything? Uh, music, no. <laughs> okay, so you, it's like a hobby for fun. Well, I used to play in bands, but now I do. You know, I'm a, a film actor, television actor, writer, stand-up comedian, house builder. So I, I'm limited time now. My, my condolences to you. Yeah. <laughs> You're one of me, one of me people. Yeah, actually, you're one of me people too. No, you're not a film actor, Jimmy. Yes, I am. What? You made three little extra movies. No, you never were in the true. films. That's not true. Were you on, were you on Charlie's too. Angels or no, Macmillan and Wife? But, but I wasn't in the films I was in. I wasn't an extra. I actually spoke. <laughs> so did I. What, what, what film you? Spoke? Those were independents. I was on television. It doesn't matter if it's an independent film. You still speak. No, You're those, in, he does the, independent films. No, those it's those kind of independents that never went anywhere. Some jerk had a couple of bucks and said, "I'm going to be a producer." <laughs> 
<laughs> and they and made some piece that's of what, shit. That's what a lot of the independent films are. <laughs> I know people out here in Los Angeles have made little movies for ten thousand bucks. So <laughs> absolutely. Well, that's what we talked about earlier. Was what a, a Peter Coyote is doing now? Have you heard? I uh, yeah. yeah. About I, the, I heard why that. should the big ones get eighteen million and us guys get guts, as we say in Italian, nothing. Yeah. I agree with that. I mean, it's not balanced. What what makes them any better? Big deal. So they could they could bring in tickets. So what? The studios behind a lot of them, you know, which is there well, it goes. And then you get well, into the indie, and you got a, a punch, scrap, and scrape your way off. Actually, well, you know, when Peter Coyote gets ten thousand bucks for a film, it's pretty sad. Yeah. Peter's got you. quite a record, and I love him, and he's a brilliant actor. He is. He is. He did a movie I love. Oh, Peter's fabulous. I mean, it's sad that he had to come up with this. And now the union, you know, we that are in the union, we should now side with them and say, yes. You know, I mean, when they offer me a contract to, to be a lead with Angelina Jolie, I'm going to turn them down. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, so you're actually, okay, so we have had a lot of people who do the whole stuntman thing. And actually, we just had Pedro Miguel Arce on who... Is actually like a karate guy, like has made all kinds of movies where he's like the like beats people up. Even he's like six foot something. Real, he's real a big nice heavy guy. set guy, but a really nice guy with some great film credits. But we've never actually any, had anybody on who's actually like recognized in the world by being in the uh, martial arts hall of fame before. And I love martial arts movies, and I want to talk about that a little bit. But but uh, you were a martial artist first, and then you decided to do movies. Is that how you made your transition, or how did you go from like being a martial arts guy to going into film well i was uh born and raised in a little village in ohio and i grew up watching uh the kung fu series david carradine and of course bruce lee and from that moment on i knew that i wanted to learn kung fu and however in that little uh dot on the map it's only a thousand people in this village there was nowhere around i could do so but i did get a spot, a part in the movie Brubaker. They filmed at 20 miles from my home in Ohio. I remember Brubaker. So I jumped on my motorcycle. Who's in Brubaker? Yeah, Robert Redford. Robert, I jumped on, that's right. Jumped on my motorcycle, a uh, tent, backpack, sleeping bag, 600 bucks, and a guitar strapped to the side. Rode to Los Angeles, uh, got my uh, first place here, and then uh, started in the 80s uh, in martial arts. The, you know, 1984, somewhere around there. And then uh, simultaneously out trying to get in movies, and they just happened to fall on the same time. I love it. So what was your big break, and how'd you get there? There's been no that big question, break. But answer fighting, fighting my way to the top. It's just audition, audition, audition. And then, yeah. of course, you, you have a lot of tools in your entertainment chest. That's why I've added stand-up comedy. And, of course, you know, I, I'll work as a stunt coordinator. I don't really like to unless I have a part in the film, you know. And uh, I don't do a lot of falls, you know, out of buildings or things like that as a stuntman. It's primarily fighting, uh, martial arts, uh, coordinating, and martial arts uh, combat. I actually met David Carradine. Is it, it's David Carradine, right? Or is there a Keith Carradine? There's a David Carradine. Keith, Keith and a David. David. Which one was Kung Fu? Keith. David. Oh, David. David huh? Yeah, okay. So I met him before he died, probably like about five years before he died. Well, he's the one that asphyxiated himself while yeah. masturbating. Yeah. What a way yeah. to go. And I went to... And he was in Thailand. I actually, though, I went to a party with him, and he was actually like a really like nice guy. That was like before I had done any of this stuff, so I didn't know a lot of famous people. So the fact that I like got to go and like talk to him, I was all excited and everything. And I think that nowadays you have such great... You know, people like that you need to get into films with, like, um, like, like Ron. Ron really likes, and he he doesn't even like fighting films. Okay, Ron doesn't really like fighting films, but he likes Jason Statham a lot. Statham, I don't know how you pronounce his last. How do you pronounce his last name? Statham. Statham. Okay, he loves yeah, Jason Statham. Statham, so he'll go see anything that Jason Statham is in because he I'd thinks leave, he's hot. I'd leave you for Jason. <laughs> Because Ron thinks he's like super hot he too. Is the he's the sexiest guy I've ever seen. He is so sexy and he's really not that great looking, but there's something about him. You know that magic chemistry that so many actors of, of, of years ago had? I mean, Clark Abel, Cary Grant, they had certain sex appeal. But then there were people like Robert uh, Young, who also had a sex appeal, but it wasn't. How do you consider yourself? What kind of sex appeal are you? 
I think I cover, you, you know, I've played leading man things, but I've also uh, covered, you know, where I go in, the gruff is all grown out, and my facial expressions mean, and I play the bad guy. So How tall are you? So, are you really tall? So you never want to... No. You never I am. Just... I am actually short. I'm five ten. That's, oh, that that's not that really is short. short. That's no. not really short. Well, by that's average, standards. I guess. By today's standards, yeah. I mean, five ten. Everybody's seven foot three today. So, uh, if you were like, <clears throat> like, what are what are like name like three of the, your favorite like uh, karate films type films that that are like the ones that you like the best? Oh, I would say number one, Enter the Dragon. Okay. Personally, uh. Number two uh, would have to be another Bruce Lee film called The Game of Death. I, I really enjoy that. And uh, number three, that would come up into, there's a lot, of, uh, a lot of films that would maybe tie on number three. But uh, then again, I, I do like some of the uh, Jason Statham films. I, I really like him as an actor, and he does have that aura about him, and I, I'll, I'll tell you that. Uh, but I, on my third one, I, I probably have to put a little thought into that because I, I there's so many that are equivalent. See, I see. I think I, I, I like the cheesy ones. I think, and so. <laughs> Um, Cause my favorite one out of all of them, and it's not like a karate fight film, but like I love Best of the Best, but only the first one, the first one yeah. where they like fight the the Olympic teams or whatever, and they fight or whatever. Like to me, that's like an awesome movie. I've seen it like 150 times, probably literally. Now this is going to sound stupid, but I enjoy the choreography, but not the actual. If it were really hurting people, I wouldn't like it. But I do enjoy the choreography, and I know how long it takes for you guys to figure out the moves to learn the moves so that you don't hurt each other. And I think that's where the beauty of the film is. Not necessarily, see, I would like young people to know the violence like that doesn't work. You shouldn't do that. You shouldn't go to a karate class so you could beat up a kid in school. That's not what they actually teach anyway, though, right? No, but a lot of kids today, they say, I've heard them saying, fuck you, I'm a black belt, you know, I'm going to get you or whatever. <laughs> and that's not what karate is. Karate is a dance. A beautiful dance when done well. And the film that I appreciated, I don't know what it's called, but it's the girl. That weird girl that jumps all over and flies around and does all kinds of wonderful things. She's an Asian girl. I don't know, Crouching Tiger, Hidden Dragon? That, that's the one. The, <laughs> I didn't see that, so. The, the well, if we could add a comedy, a comedy martial arts film in, I would think uh, I would put Kung Pao. It's oh, that's a funny Asian. movie. It's funny. My buddy Steve Odekirk made it and, and uh, directed it, and they're going to make a sequel now. Sony finally gave a green light. But I would say that comedic martial arts film would have to be my, my third. And, and it's also very delicious, Kung Pao. Did you, wait, wait, did, <laughs> did, you, did you ever see Best of the Best? Do you know what film yes. that is? Okay. Yeah, I, that's with uh, um, Eric, Eric Roberts. Roberts, is it not? Yeah, Eric, I love that movie. Now, you're a jolly, friendly guy, too, in a good interview. Is this how you are all the time? Yes, on set. this is me. So I brought up a point with our other guest. He said that uh, people are very nice to him, big stars. Um, I did a film with Sophia Loren in 1959, and we were told not to disturb her, not to go near Ted Ponto or any of the major stars. And I, of course, don't listen to anybody, so I speak... <laughs> I speak Italian. <laughs> Sophia was 26 years old. I was 19. Her English was bad. So I went over and started speaking Italian to her, and she enjoyed it. And I sat in George Sanders' <laughs> chair <laughs> talking to Sophia Loren, excuse me. And they came over, and they said, you know, you can't do this. You, you, you're going to get thrown off the picture. And she said, oh, no, 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 let him stay. And I stayed. So I did three days. We, we shot Grand Central Station, Central Park, and Long Beach, Long Island. And I stayed talking to her, and it was wonderful. But I felt bad for the rest of the crew, a cast, because couldn't do it. They had to stay in their little area. And Barbara Nichols was in the film, and she didn't care for that either, because all the boys, mostly gay guys, were, you know, playing soldiers and sailors. Barbara was fabulous. Barbara Nichols loved the boys. Loved gay boys. And, in fact, one thing is funny. We all had to use the public bathroom at Long Beach. And I said to one of the crew guys, I said, how come when 
Champ Hunter goes into the men's room, nobody's allowed to go there. He said, because if we let the guys in, he'd never come out. <laughs> <laughs> You know, Tab is openly gay, and I interviewed yeah. him, and he's also become a friend of mine. So I'm allowed to say that Tab won't mind. So hold on, I want to go back to the I want to go back to the karate thing a little bit because everybody in the chat. First of all, everybody in the chat room is picking like loves Bruce Lee stuff. They're saying Fist of Fury. I don't know. They're like writing a bunch of things. So so what do you think then about Jean Claude Van Damme? Because I also like Bloodsport and Kickboxer. Yeah. I forgot about Bloodsport, but uh, it, uh, it, it's a good movie. Uh, Jean-Claude Van Damme, when he first came on the scene, was making some really entertaining movies, Bloodsport being one of them. And uh, I thought he would go much further in the A-listers uh, than he did initially. But uh, I like Jean-Claude, and, and I'm rooting for him on you know many great comebacks. Oh, I think it would be cool if he came back, too, but I think that he doesn't. I think Jason Statham kind of like ruined it for everybody, actually. No, no, no. Jason, you know, I never liked those seven movies. I never would watch them because they were so violent. What are they called? Furious. Oh, Fast and Furious. Fast and Furious. I went with Jimmy a couple of weeks ago to see the latest one. Crazy about it. I love that film so much because he can do karate. But not, what does he do? Karate? What do you think? Oh, I don't know. What, I don't when, know the when difference. he flies around and kicks everybody and, and the things that they do, I think is just wonderful coordination. And that's what and, I was saying though, is I think Jason like has wrecked it for a lot of Jason those other people. Is because fabulous. He's, he's, he's actually, what do you think? He's a good actor. Also. He said he liked him. No. What do you think of Jason's moves? The way he kicks people and turns around and gets a, a, a frying pan and hits the guy and then kicks the other guy and then stabs the other guy and then shoots the guy with his own gun. I mean, I think it's <laughs> clever choreography and whoever composes that is truly genius because it doesn't look corny or stupid. It looks good. It's entertaining. Absolutely, and it is clever choreography, but it all starts with the writer. Okay. You mean the writer oh. writes those moves? Absolutely, a, a oh, writer. Right. I, I write screenplays as well. And I'll sit write down. those moves? Well, I don't write every move, but I'll do a layout of exactly the type of fight scene I want to make or I want to do, and then I go in or have other people come in and, and go from that initial template of, of the fight scene. Of course, someone who's um, seasoned as a, a stunt guy and a martial arts fighter, they're going to be able to use their own flavor, but still fall so right you, in there. What do you call the moves? Like turn around with your left foot, kick him in the face, and then hit him with a frying pan? I mean, you actually detail every piece of that work? Well, on something like the frying pan issue, yeah, it would have to be in there because they're just not going to think, uh, the director, hey, someone go get me a frying pan so we could use it in the scene. It all has to be uh, on paper. You know what the scene entails. You know what you're going to be utilizing in that scene. And then you just do different blocking. Uh, you know. But who teaches you, you the moves? The actual well, usually they'll moves. Usually have, they'll have the stunt man and then the stunt coordinator. Which is what he does. Yeah. Okay, I got it. Yeah. So, so this. So, so that's an interesting job you have. I would love to do that if I were younger and more nimble. You know, I would love to do that as a, a star, I love the dance of the coordination of those fights. I think they're fabulous. So listen up to everybody. If you want to follow Mark's on Twitter, which you got to follow me on Twitter. I just found you yesterday. But he's at Mark of the Cobra on Twitter, and his website is markofthecobra.com. And I believe Mark of the Cobra is like a film you're working on. Is that correct? Yeah, it's uh, just coming out of development. Actually, it uh, we were ready to go on it. I had my investor lined up. I made a couple offers uh, to uh, some real well-known actors. Two weeks later, my investor passed away. Oh, wow. So, yeah. I, had, I know what that's like because I've had a film all ready to go with everybody yeah. signed up, and then at the last second, I got the, the wind pulled out from under You know, I too. didn't check my phone, so I must have missed your phone call. <laughs> when you wanted some major stars. <laughs> yeah, that you know what? It, it happens sometimes. You know, the calls just don't go through. I don't know why. <laughs> I don't know either. <laughs> no, I have a movie coming up, which I cannot discuss, but I have a film coming up. And they're actually, it's a, it's a very good friend of ours who's a big, big, big film person. He's got a hit out right now. And he said he's going to write a piece for me to put me in the film. That's so, awesome. Well, I think I'm going to play an old fag ex-ballet dancer. Do you think that's typecasting? 
Well, it's not for me to say. <laughs> <laughs> but you're going to be in the film, so hey. So, yeah. <laughs> hey, tell us, tell us what Mark of the Cobra, what is it actually like about? Okay, it is about the Mexican drug cartel infiltrating Los Angeles. Now, oh, wow. <laughs> it's contemporary. Now, but the head of the cartel is also a martial artist. Now, they have this lipstick lesbian Russian assassin working for the cartel. She initially wants to take over their game in Los Angeles. She steals $2 million worth of their cocaine. They put a hit out on her, kill the wrong person in front of a martial arts school. Lo and behold, whose school is it? It's mine. So I, oh, see the, go. I see the hit gone bad, and I'm pulled into it as a witness by the police, and they kidnap my ex wife The bad guys kidnap my ex-wife to get me to shut up. And it turns out in the end where the head of the cartel and myself used to study under the same praying mantis kung fu master in our teens. He went one way. I went. Oh, good. so you're like the you're the good one, and he's the bad one, and you didn't really give a shit about your wife anyway, so you didn't care. <laughs> yeah, well, you know, I do try to go well. get her and kick some ass while I'm doing you know, it. it. It's really coincidental because I'm playing a martial arts guy who owns a martial arts place, and this happens in front of my martial arts, and I'm dragged into it. And gee. That's a good how, story. How ironic <laughs> is that? I promise you, I didn't steal your story. <laughs> yes, you did. <laughs> so tell me, are you married, single, straight? Dude? I'm single you... right now. Uh, I was married for 10 years. Good. But uh, we come to uh, the conclusion that we're better friends than lovers. And uh, so plus, she... she's a marital and family therapist, and oh. I could never win an argument. I was married to a therapist, too. I know what you mean. Yeah, and it wore off on Jimmy. The, <laughs> like, the fighting, the arguing we do is disgusting. But he has to have it his way. And, I, and I'm, you know, I'm me. You can't change me. Like, what do they say? Old dog, new tricks? Can't teach an old dog, new yeah, tricks. Yeah, and I'm 77 next week or two weeks from In now. Two weeks. And, oh, hey. uh, yeah, I'll be 77, and I'm just set in my ways. I told you, I was in the, I'm in the business 57 years. I yeah, I thought you were bullshitting me. I, 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 you look great. I started, I started at 19 years old as a, a one-liner. Actually, three lines. That's how I got my um, uh, SAG. And uh, my brother-in-law was a movie producer. So he put me in the film, That Kind of Woman, with Sophia and Tab. And that's how it all started. Uh it's been a very, very exciting career. I have no problem. No, I have no regrets. I was never one for movies because it's boring. It takes too long, and I don't remember lines. So forget about it. <laughs> I was a stand-up comic in drag for 45 years. I impersonated Jane Russell, who then became my dear friend for years. We're very dear friends. And uh, I loved working live. I loved the rushing from night to night, different clubs. I loved the, the making the audience laugh because I was a comic. And uh, I loved being the other person. And being a woman was exciting because I could get away with murder. And, you know, and that is so interesting that you say that because um, I have a, a group of friends. Uh, they all go to uh, a, a class, a, a comedy class. And they're all, they all dress in drag, and they do the same thing. They, they do the shows, usually at the comedy store on Sunset Boulevard in Hollywood, in okay. drag. And yeah. it's, uh, it's hilarious. It's, just, it's right. great. Do you have any shows coming up? Like, how long have you been doing comedy? Uh, going up, I've been doing comedy probably, I'm relatively new to it, year and a half maybe, something like that. But, but I you're play, good. You're good, I, I can tell. I play shows all the time. I just did the Ice House uh, Friday, last Friday night. I did the comedy store on Sunset a week before that. I have a show coming up on the 13th in downtown Los Angeles at the Clown House. And then on uh, May 20th, I'm opening up at a martial arts hall of fame event, probably about 400 people. I'm opening up the ceremony with stand up. There you go. No, I could see you doing stand up because you have the energy and you have the charm and the funniness, and you can get away with murder too. I think that you can get really um, uh, sort of down, raunchy, and personal with somebody, and they won't be upset by it. 
you know, especially because you got that nice smile. No, no, it's just <laughs> his attitude and his person and, and his body language. You know, you study body language when you do stand up, because a joke doesn't work if your hands are at your side. You have to talk with your hands and say, and he had a great big schlong, and you have to do the mmm. And that's absolutely what he's got. right. And that's what he's got. He's got the whole movement. So basically, though, you started martial arts in 1984. Is that what you said earlier? That is correct. Well, so actually, I started in 72 in Ohio at a YMCA taking judo. But that was not my gig. So, so I picked to get it back into up the, in 82. To get into the Martial Arts Hall of Fame then from 72 to 2012, that's like 40 years. And so it took 40 years to get into the Hall of Fame. So it's like a really big deal that you're like in the Martial Arts Hall of Fame. It is, but I'm in three Hall of Fames, and I'm also an inductee as an honoree into the Martial Arts History Museum in Burbank, California. Way to go. See, they didn't, they didn't even send me all that information. Congratulations. I think that's really cool. Thanks. I was in the Hall of Fame once, too. Yeah, well, <laughs> what kind? <laughs> yeah, I was in the Hall of Fame, and then I went from the hall, I got into the closet, and I never got out of the closet in the hall. So then it was for 16 years I was married to a real woman. And then I found the closet door and I got out and I was back in the hall. <laughs> but I was famous. I was very famous. So I if was you could say, where'd the fame come in? <laughs> if, you could, if, if you could be in any film that's ever been made, it doesn't have to be martial arts. I mean, just any film. Like, what would be a film that if you could be in any film that you could have been in, what movie would you have liked to have been in? And number two, who would be like a, a male and female that you'd like to act opposite? I would have loved to have been in the Western Tombstone. Oh, really? Hey, yes. Oh, wait a minute. Kurt Russell, I think Kurt it's in Russell, that. Val Kilmer. Oh, Kilmer. Kilmer, right. I would have loved to play. Why that film? Because I always wanted to be in a Western, and I haven't had the opportunity yet. That film wasn't even good. I enjoyed it. You did? I enjoyed Val oh, Kilmer's like performance, especially, and that's what I was going to touch upon. I, I really would have liked to have played that role. I liked it. I mean, so many other film, Western films that were really good. <laughs> oh, that, that was, it wasn't a really good film. You know, maybe because of Kurt Russell. I don't know what it was. Kurt Russell is just so hard to believe as a cowboy. Val you know, Kilmer won an MTV Award, Best Male Performance and Most Desirable. I don't know if I think he's desirable. Okay, so then who are the people you would want to act against, male and female? I would love, I would love to act alongside Robert De Niro. But that's everybody, what, that's what the everybody guy earlier said, said too. Everybody said what that. actor would not? And uh, I would also uh, female. God, there's so many. You my know, my fe no, my female Jessica Lang. That's an actress. She is a completely. Uh, she is so Total. awesome. But I, I think I would really, really like to work with Meryl Streep. No, Jessica more than Meryl. <laughs> But that's his. I no, think. I you know. asked me. Yeah, <laughs> but, but we we have to have an argument. That's that's <laughs> the, that's the whole thing. It starts it starts up, you know, banting back and forth. Now you say why Meryl and I say why Jessica. It opens a door for you. Shut up, Jimmy. I'm leading him in. <laughs> yeah. so why, we don't have why, all that much time though? To why lead him in. why Meryl Streep? Meryl Streep plays Meryl Streep, but different. Jessica Lang just has something about her that she's so authentic. There's no acting with Jessica. Meryl, I feel, mm, I like Meryl. So but... hold on. So then, okay, let's say who, who, one that you could have a romantic interest with. Who's like the one that you think is like super hot that you'd like to have a romantic role with? Oh, my gosh. Oh, I wish I had that uh, question in advance because let me <laughs> see. <laughs> so okay, many. you can give us two. I would, uh... oh, my gosh. I I got to think about it. I got to hey, think about that one. Who would you, if you were going to have sex with a woman? <laughs> I, had, I had sex with a woman for 16 years. I know you years. have. So no. I've got two kids. What do you think? I, I, they were born with a finger? No, I know they weren't born with a finger, but. Oh, my God. Who would I want to have sex with still? I can't because it would be incestuous. Angie, oh, I mean okay. Angie, like, Angie Voigt, Angelina Jolie is my daughter's friend. They grew up together in school. 
And oh, just wow. as, and I watched Angie grow, and those tits and those lips are real. They're really hers. Actually, Tristan says Imogen Poots, which I don't know what she looks like, and Rose Byrne. Oh, I know she, who. She looks like. I know who I'd have sex with in a minute. Clarice, what's it, Theon? How do you say her name? Oh, Charlize Theron. Charlize, Char Charlize Theron. Oh, is she yeah, he likes her a lot. Oh, she's gorgeous. No, I, I like her as well. She would be one of my top ten. Oh, she's gorgeous. Did you see oh, her in that movie, the, the latest Seven Furious? Uh, you have to go see Furious 8 or whatever. She was so I good. Thought, I love the movie, and I, and I hate those kind of movies. She's but so I, hot in it, though. I left the theater saying to Jimmy, I loved that movie. I can't believe it. From minute to end, I wanted more. It was the best I'm gonna one I've I'm going to have to look into that, because I haven't seen one of those, because they're just not my type of genre either. But if it's that good, I I'm have telling to you. you she makes the movie like she looks like a Grace Kelly. I mean, she brings such a beauty and class Here's the whole to thing, the film. Mark, because he hasn't seen all of them, so they stink. Um, They're all violent. The first, blood. no, no, the first one, two, the first like three of them are totally different than the rest of them. Okay, I did the costume design on the second one, but the first, second, and third one are more about speed racing and racing cars down the street, you know, type mm. racing type. This was written. Then when you get to four, five, six, seven, and eight, they've introduced like Dwayne the Rock and all these like big stars, and then it right. becomes about like stopping nuclear war and like also it becomes a much bigger, different film. So if you wanna, if you don't wanna watch the car racing ones, then you got to start on like four or five, and and they're all really. I am good. the most difficult person to entertain because I look at lighting, I look at sets, I look at everything, directing, I look at the whole picture, not just the, the movie story. And most of those furious is well, horrible that the stop camera da, 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 to make me want to vomit, you know, da, 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 all over the place. Here they held the camera, thank God, you know, like they used to in 1940. And the script was decent. She was breathtakingly gorgeous. You couldn't wait to see her again in another scene. He was gorgeous. The whole storyline was okay, you know, but it was entertaining. But the things that they did, the car chases, the this, the that, the, I mean, it was amazing. I mean, like very clever. Flying the cars out of planes and all kinds of very stuff. Very clever. So. Very cleverly well, done. It's interesting that you say that because uh, initially when I watch a movie, I do the same thing. I watch it. I look at, at yeah. the, the blocking. <laughs> I, I, wa I watch on the technical aspect and not just the story, but then the second time I, I go in and watch it, I leave all that out and I'm just it, it just – indulge myself in the story. But, you know, uh, I, I could uh, never do that. It's so funny, mm -hmm. though, because from you looking at it, which we only got a minute to go, so we got to wrap up, but with you looking at it, with all the fight scenes and stuff, knowing how that actually like works and stuff, you probably look at it way different than like me, because I'm just like, oh my god, that's just really cool. <laughs> no, to yeah, me, the well, most important... The yeah. most important person in a film is the GP. The the, DP. Who? D DP. 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 And a GP is the rating. <laughs> DP. If the DP stinks, the film stinks for me. All right. So here's what we got. The do, camera guys. is the other actor. Remember you guys, that. Mark is on Twitter. Follow Mark on Twitter. It's at Mark of the Cobra. Check out his website, markofthecobra.com. When the film gets financed and you get rolling, come on back. We'll bring you back and we'll promote the film and the release of the film. It'll be a lot of fun. And um, and we want to thank you for coming on the show. And we want to thank Joe Williamson for introducing us to have you come on the show. Thank You've you so much, guys. I, I really appreciate that. You could also follow me on Instagram at Beach Mantis, Mark Hoadley, and you can also uh, hit me up on Facebook at any time, Mark Hoadley, Redondo Beach. I appreciate uh, the interview, guys, and uh, thank just thanks so much. Absolutely. Have a great uh, weekend. Our pleasure, Mark Hamilton. <laughs> hey, next time we, you will get it right. <laughs> thanks thanks well, a lot, Mark. It, it is Mark Hammond, isn't it? <laughs> yes, yes, it's Mark Hammond. Can't you see? I was in Star Wars. Yes, right, there right. you go. Mark, yes, thank you so much. Thank you for being you on. You, you were you were terrific. You were a lot of fun and a sweet guy. Everybody out there, watch this guy. Enjoy his work. Thanks, Mark. All right, everybody. Thanks, thanks so much. We want to Bye. thank everybody for tuning in. Chad, you're a rock star. Uh, chat room. Thanks, everybody. Iris Ginger, Tristan, Iris, Goddess, um, Naomi, Zar, Drew, all the people that are in there. There's Illy. Everybody who's in there, thanks so much for tuning in. Uh, we got a great show next week. It's going to be a lot of fun. Chad, thank you so much. You guys have a great weekend.